Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Dave, the, this, the show is going great, lots of great guests, and we're going to talk about one of your favorite topics, data modeling. Yeah, well, it's, it's a topic that is really important because it's part of getting your data estate right, so you can apply AI to it. Exactly, right. indeed. Well, I'd like to introduce our next guest. We have Serge Gersh Gershkovich. He is the head of product at SQL DBM. Welcome, Hi. welcome back to theCUBE, I should Thank say. Thank you Cube so alum. much, great to be here. And Jamin Patel, Senior Manager, Data Platform and Engineering at SQL DPM. Welcome, Jamin. Thank you so much. So, Serge, I'm going to start with you. Talk a little bit about SQL DPM, what you're building, what you're all about. Of course, uh, SQL DBM is a cloud-based data modeling solution and data modeling has been around for as long as databases have been around, but the cloud and everything, this is why we're here today, Snowflake and scalability, shareability, collaboration, this is what the cloud unlocks for just about any solution, any product, and data modeling is most useful when you get it out in front of the business, in front of your coworkers, in front of your users. It's something that starts with the data team but is shareable and usable by pretty much anyone working on the database. So when you're able to just easily input somebody's email address and have them come into the same vision that you're designing and see it in real time, we feel like that's really what unlocks the true power of modeling because once you've designed it, you want everybody to be aligned on that same vision. And as soon as you take it out of your desktop and print it out or or save it as a document, now it's instantly out of sync. So with cloud, you have shareability, you have integration, you have modeling in parallel in real time. So it's, 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 it's really foundational and really powerful and transformative. And the customers we've had on previously talking about SQL DBM, the cloud-based, cloud-first, cloud-native, it's, it's very simple to bring in, as you say, non-technical users. And my understanding is there's a little bit of art involved in data modeling, right? And so to the extent that you can align people on what that sort of work of art is, and you could do a lot with small teams, is sort of the value that you guys, you guys bring. Have you seen that, and is that part of the appeal? I wonder if you could, first of all, describe your, your role, and, and then we can get into the sort of discussion about how you're doing modeling. Sure. So I'm Senior Manager of Data Platform and Engineering. Uh, my role at Baptist is to get data from various source systems, about 60 plus source systems daily, and make that available for our end users, reporting team, AI ML teams, and so forth. So as part of this, you know, structure of data matters. Uh, if you don't have a structure to it, people are going to keep guessing, and you're not going to have great adoption and usage of the data. So that's what SQL DBM helps us, is to structure the data from raw to curated, which is modeling, having relationship within each of the functional areas for the financial and clinical domain. Easy view to that, so if you have a question, you can quickly find how you can relate the info and get insight to it, and get that info to doctors, um, nurses, and so forth. Right, so you're a healthcare provider, you've got, and, and what's the scope of of your responsibility, you're serving the entire organization or is it just sort of a narrow piece? Yeah, I support complete uh, corporate uh, Baptist for all the data needs uh, from platform management to provisioning them and making it available to the end users. So what were you doing before SQL DBM and what led you here? Take us through that journey if you would. So I think before SQL DBM there was um, some, some collaboration but that's specific to a particular need or request and when you are working on a specific project, you don't think about how it connects to all the other data that you have and what more insights can you get from it. So what SQL DBM helps with now is once we model it, we can collaborate with stakeholders, SMEs, and various other teams to understand is this model works for this project versus any other needs that we may have for the data. And collaborate and then um, finalize that model and make it available uh, to get, uh, to be used by the end users. I am fascinated and excited about the potential of, all, of changing the healthcare industry, how it's delivered, how our experience as patients is changed. Can you, can you just sort of bring this down to earth a little bit in terms of how, how even just our experience as someone who is going to Baptist Health to receive medical care would, would feel the difference? Yeah. 
So um, let's get to the front end. So uh, Baptist Health is a data centric or we have a Pineapp app. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's a very popular. So where patient can go to the app, schedule appointments, look at their lab results, and do more, right? Uh, message with the provider for any questions they may have. This all comes and is supported by the data that we collect in various systems and model it and make it available to that front app. So for patients, it's an easy access to their info in a protected manner. So, so by doing, help us understand this, by doing the proper modeling, you now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have the semantics such that uh, anywhere you apply that data, it's, it's understood, it's, it's, it's um, coherent um, and consistent. Uh, is, and that, that is a step that a lot of companies don't take. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll plug the data into different BI tools. You know, billings means one thing in one place and, and another thing in another. Why is it that more companies don't start with more disciplined data modeling? It's a great question. I think even the term data modeling is a bit of a misnomer because it puts the emphasis on the, what the user interacts with, which is the database. But a data model is really nothing more than the business model in a readable, understandable set of semantics, just simplified. That we can talk all day about the nuances of what is a customer, what, what is considered an active customer, when was the last time they purchased, or did they cancel, but if you can find a very simple set of semantics, both visual and um, something that translates into something a database understands, then you can just put it down in front of the paper and now it's not one vision in my head, another interpretation of that in your head. We can look at that and say, oh yeah, we agree. Or actually no, that is not the granularity of a product. It's actually this category is also involved. So it makes it, it takes the ambiguity out of it, in which point designing it as a, as a database is trivial. And because data tends to just appear once you have a running enterprise, you have an order and the order comes in. You have a reservation and the reservation comes in with certain details. People just assume that they don't need to model because they have something to work with. Now I can transform it, now I can apply some rules and business logic, put it in front of a dashboard. But is does not imply ought. And they, are, they have no guarantee that what they're looking at is representative of how their SMEs, how their field sales force is really looking at that same reservation or that same contract that they help create. So it's really something that you can get by if you don't have it. Uh, I was just chatting with Jamin before the interview and he mentioned that Baptist is actually a nonprofit. So efficiency is, is paramount. They have to do, like he said, more with less. And when you don't have a formal data model, you still have a data model. Some, it's in somebody's head, it's in some system. It just means that anytime an analyst has a question, they're going to go and they're going to bug the lead architect or they're going to go bug the business users. When in, they can really self-serve all of this information if you can formalize and centralize it. It's just not an efficient way of anyone's time. Meetings, conversations, and even then kind of guessing at, okay, did, I, did he really explain it well? Did he understood what I explained? And when mature enterprises, just they don't survive without data modeling. The bigger you get, the, the more probability is that you have a central architect who manages the data model, who makes sure that data teams play within the, the confines. But when you're smaller, that might not be the case. It's like when you walk into a shopping center, if it's small enough, you might just say, you know, I'll just wander around, I'm pretty sure I'll find my way. But when it's Mall of America, you can spend three days and not without a, you know, without a map and not find what you're looking for. And this is the thing where there, these are two edges of the extreme and it's like a, a, a pot of water coming up to boil. You, you don't quite notice where that line is. Like this is, this is uncomfortable now but it's also what you've been doing yesterday. It's a great analogy, and when you, hear, when you think about what we heard yesterday in the keynotes, I don't know if you guys were in there, but, but all these announcements around Cortex AI, and it's new, you're probably not playing around with it yet, or maybe you are, but unless you have a, a, a you know, well-architected data model, you're not going to get as much value uh, out of applying that, and to Rebecca's point, if you can apply that, then the service levels that you're going to be able to give your patients 
is going to be much, much better. How do you think about applying a AI? Where, where does that fit in the roadmap? So we are doing a lot with AI, um, you know, generating patient summary of their visit to quickly getting yep. that details. But if you don't have the proper data model, the hundreds of tables, hundreds of data sets, how can you get to the info that matters to the patient or the physician to treat them and you know, have a better outcome for the patient care? So this is where we try and holistically think about how this particular model or for a subject area can help us to easily answer those questions. And let's say you're doing a model where you want to say, what is the bad utilization, right? And how we can improvise that operationally. So that data helps them to quickly get to that instead of going for months without getting to that insight. And, and so you, you, I was kind of going from the patient standpoint, but the doctors get a lot of benefit out of this because yes. they don't have to sit there and type the whole time and you, the patient sits there, it's sort of awkward. And, <laughs> and I presume the doctors must love this. Right, I mean, it Absolutely. just takes away all that heavy lifting. Absolutely, and then they can also do get further reports, right, that can help, okay, this particular age category for a patient, this is what their diagnosis were, what, how can we use that for further research and improve the treatment plans and so forth, the other patient. So there's a lot to it, again, going, uh, not going into much specifics uh, of it, but you know, having a proper structure on the data simplifies your use of data. And it compresses the time at which the patient can actually take action. How many times have you been to the doctors and then the days later, or they're getting a phone call, they leave a, a message, they get an email that gets buried. If you can actually say, this is what you got to do right now, yeah. go do it. I mean, sometimes it's simple with a prescription, but something more complicated, that compresses the, the time to value. No, indeed, indeed. So, so how closely are you working, I mean obviously you're working closely with your customers and partners, but in terms of gathering their feedback about how they're approaching generative AI and how, the potential that they see to transform their organizations, what are you seeing right now? We're seeing that AI is, we can talk about kind of the, the role of AI within modeling, which is still a little bit unproven, but we're seeing the old paradigm of garbage in, garbage out come to fruition like never before because AI is nothing more than a pattern recognition and sensing tool that will just kind of sort through what, what it has and give you the best possible prediction based on that. And when you have a unproperly modeled data set where the inferences that it can generate are are just guaranteed to be incorrect if the data is wrong, if the data is messy, if it has to do extra work where you have you know, a customer called customer on one side, client on another, will it figure out that a customer is a client and they're the same thing? It's just adding more and more ambiguity to something that is already ambiguous by nature. And we're seeing a lot of interest come back into the data modeling space because all of the engineers training LLMs, the first thing they're going to ask for is a clean data set. We're obviously with, uh, with AI, we're going to save them the trouble of having to formally define of exactly how these things link together. That can be also inferred from a properly curated data model. But to go at it blind with, with untested, un uncleaned, unproven data and, and no foundation to, to kind of even help you understand what the case is, like that's just the recipe for, for disaster because LLMs, just like Snowflake Compute, is not cheap. There's, there's significant hardware running in there, so it's not just, oh, my query took a little longer. It's like, I just blew through $10,000 of compute credit and it's giving me gobbledygook. So that's not going to fly. <laughs> it's not going to fly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah run it again, exactly. <laughs> You guys have news. I'm looking at the business wires uh, that you've unveiled. It says the first all-in-one relational transformational modeling platform, um, TX, yeah. you call it. What's, what's the news? Fill us in. Oh, great question. We're super excited about TX. So TX stands for transformation. And it's really, it's the next logical step when you do modeling. You go from conceptual to logical, physical, and it's still just describing kind of what your data should look like. And then the next obvious question is, okay, well now go ahead and, and, and move it, transform it, put it in front of the business. This is just the, the outline, so to speak. 
And this is the space where we, sooner or later, we just knew that we had to cross that threshold because models are great, they help streamline, they help guide the transformations, but everybody working around this convention floor today, anybody using Snowflake, they're using Snowflake to transform data. So why would we not make it easier for them? And you know, it's not like, if anything, we're, we're not innovators, it, we're, I'm surprised it took us this long, because our customers just kept coming to us and saying, okay, well, I've modeled it, I'm going to be using this tool to transform, I'm going to be using that tool to transform, and I'll be hand, hand rolling my transformations. How can I get the data model and enforce it and ensure that it it's, uh, keeps up with what I'm now coding through logic? And we said, well, that's it. That, just do it all in one tool. We'll make it easy for you. And what we built is our existing foundational trans, um, relational modeling in the same project as the transformation. So as soon as you create the data pipeline, it comes right back, or it doesn't even come right back, it's already in the same project and viewable as part of your existing data model. So that allows you to work bottom up, meaning define the structure, validate it with the business before you've done the hard part, which is all the SQL logic and the business logic. And once they say green light, go for it, you can just add the SQL or vice versa. The typical the business comes and says, can you pull that data real quick? Maybe you don't have time to go column by column, validate data columns, just write the logic with a, with a single button, we'll generate the model for you, synchronize all of that, and just again, bring it. They will be able to see the, the pipeline and the structure before it's even run and validated. And, and when, when is this available? It's already available. Is, okay, so, so just shipping GA today, essentially, or yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday was our, our big reveal, and it's available for, for trials and demos. It's a SaaS tool, so that's the beauty of, again, running on Snowflake is we can build our, our beautiful front end, and Snowflake will scale it. It'll just push down all that, all that processing, the heavy lifting, down to Snowflake, and we don't really have to reinvent the wheel. Snowflake's already great at doing all of that. So you haven't touched this yet? No. This is, uh, <laughs> you're just getting to. started, yeah. Well, so this, in, in your future potentially, what would it do for, for your organization? I think, uh, again, I'm, I've not uh, yeah. I've been part of the review, but um, it's going to help us with how we're going to transform the data. So absolutely looking forward to the demo. And that so next step on the maturity curve is really what this is. Uh, my last question is, what do you want to be able to say that 24, let's call it 12 months from now, maybe 12 to 18 months from now, that you're not able to say today about your platform, your, your data estate? Um, I think uh, I'm going to continue, uh, we're going to continue optimizing and modeling new data sets and making it available for the end user and how we can use that data for AI ML use cases um, as well as you know, supporting our patient care and for better outcome. Excellent, well Serge, Jamin, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, a really fascinating conversation. Thanks guys. Thank it's always a pleasure, thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.